Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. If this is your first time to the channel, I'm Franco. I'm a professional engineer and an avid fisherman and lure designer. And I make these videos because I really enjoy making things and I want to share how an engineer approaches designing and making lures. In last week's video, I showed you how I designed and made these lipless crankbaits and I defined my criteria for that design. In this week's video, I'm going to make a much larger version. We're going to take the same kind of wood and carve out a six inch trolling lipless crankbait and push what I think are the limits to my design criteria. So if you're interested in seeing if it actually works, stick around. Alright, so I've got the two ends marked out and I've got this scaled so uh, four inches is one inch. And my design criteria says that the slanted part of the front of the lure that actually creates the diving surface needs to be one third of the length back. So here, the height of the lure from belly to the top has a lot more variability and uh, I believe that one quarter of the length is as narrow as you want to make it. So because I want this to be a high speed trolling lure, I want to make that as narrow as possible because I think that'll make it uh, more stable at a higher trolling speed. So a quarter of six inches is an inch and a half. All right, so there's our design box. Now we just need to add a lure. All right, so while that isn't exact, uh, it's, it kind of captures uh, the concept and my aesthetic. I had already drawn it or just kind of sketched it on a piece of paper and I'm gonna use that as my uh, template. I'm just using some contact cement to glue this on and I've got a center line so I can align it. All right, it's time to cut it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put a center line on this as a guideline. I'll also put some narrow guidelines near the edge, but the center line is really gonna be the key for me getting symmetry. All right, so the cross section of my lure is going to be somewhat a modified tear uh, teardrop and imagine that's the flat spot on top the widest point is going to be just near the center uh, or just below it and as far as how far back on the lure the wide point or the fat part it should be should be about halfway So with the center mark where the wide spot is going to be, I know I can taper from what I consider to be a relatively conservative width on the front. I don't want it to be the full width. So I'm bringing it in about an eighth on either side. And then I've just drawn a taper back to the widest point. And I'll leave it about a quarter of an inch wide at the bottom, at the very tail, I mean. And I'll do a taper from the wide point to that point on the tail. All right, that gets us a good start. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the belly, but I'll leave it a little wider. 
All right, I'm going to be doing all the shaping on, on this sander. All right, so the strategy is to first get the lure roughed in uh, along the shape lines I've drawn on top and the bottom. And then I'll start rounding the tops and getting the sort of rounded body shape that I want. That's the plan. Let's see if I can get it done. So it's kind of a subtle thing and difficult to explain, but that the lure is widest right about where my thumb is, which is around the center point. But it tapers in so many directions that it's difficult to kind of explain and uh, almost impossible to show you. But the idea is that the lure will be sort of bulbous in the middle at the center point and in the middle uh, up and down, just slightly below uh, the center point. And then all the other lines, all the other curves sort of curve from there. Kind of hard to describe and uh, impossible to show really with this uh, with this wood because it's one color. But you just kind of eyeball it and keep in mind what you want and then work it slowly uh, whichever way you want to work it whether it's just hand sanding or a knife or using power tools and just take your time sight down the center line every chance you get it'll start taking shape and you'll be able to sort of follow the uh, kind of organic shape it starts to take and it's a lot easier once it starts to get round. I hope that makes sense and that helps. You should barely be able to see the center line there and you can see it divides it pretty evenly and actually looks as if there's two pieces of wood glued together. The other thing is that I'm, I'm realizing that since I've made this so big I probably should have gone with a slightly uh, thicker piece of wood so I wouldn't have any flat spots. But you can see where there's still some paper right there at the center and that makes sense right because that's my wide spot and so I didn't sand on that I sanded down away from it. Flat spots are good for creating turbulence and we want turbulence. The question is going to be whether uh, the turbulence right there is going to be a good spot. I've got a couple little divots I think are from just the grain and I'm going to fill those with some glazing putty which is a very fast setting uh, putty used uh, in auto body work. All right, here's what the stuff looks like. And all I did was just try to cover up some of the um, saw marks uh, that I don't want to sand deeper. All right, so just getting a head start. I'm making these twist eyes and I've got this all sanded down and all the little divots that I wanted uh, fixed. All right, it's time to figure out how much weight to put in it. Let's weigh this thing. 20.17 grams. And if you'll remember from the last video, I had already worked out what the uh, density of the wood is. And all I do is cut a tiny piece of wood and I measure the three sides and I calculate the volume and then I weigh it and then I do the division and the actual density is 0.371 grams per milliliter. So since I need to know how much weight I need to add, I'll need to divide the weight of the lure by the density. And the answer is 54.4 and that's the volume of the lure. And to convert that into how many grams it needs to weigh, since I'm measuring in grams per milliliter, that translates directly into how much water it displaces. So that means I need to have this lure weigh 54.4 grams when it's done just for it to be neutral. But I want it to sink. And since I'm not going to be carving anything more off this, I have to be a little more precise with my estimate of weight that I need to put in it. Since 54.4 will just get it to be very neutral, and I know from experience that it takes about 15% more weight to get it to start to drop. So the total weight that I need to add to it, if you're not already confused, is 54.4 minus the original weight of the, of the lure, which comes out to 34.2 grams, 
but I also have to subtract the hardware and the hooks. It comes out to 35.76. We'll round it up to 36. So the total weight has to be 36 grams. All right, the tie-on eye will go two inches back. That's one third the length. I still got my mark for the center line, so that's fortunate. All right, I've got all the holes in. So for the toe eye, for the hook eyes, and all I've got to do now is drill the big holes for the lead and find lead enough to get this thing to sink. All right, so I weighed out <laughs> some bullet weights since I don't melt uh, lead myself. And so these bu three bullet weights have to fit in this body, which shouldn't be too difficult. My technique means having the weight high up in the body. So. All right, I'm gonna have to drill these massive 3 8 holes after I've got all this sanded down. This really bothers me, but it's really all you can do when you're doing wooden lures. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these cavities with um, uh, some casting resin. All right, while we're waiting for this to set and be ready to sand, I'm setting these uh, hook eyes with some two-part epoxy glue and getting it good and saturated down in there. All right, so I've got it sanded back down and you can see where the three holes were. I'm gonna wipe it down with some alcohol and give it the first coat of UV clear. I'm not gonna put this on very heavy. It really is just to sort of uh, serve as a sanding sealer. All right, let's see how it worked out. All right, it's good and set. I'm gonna give it a little sanding and you know, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of carving on this just to give it a couple of features, nothing big, just a little bit around the, the face, maybe a little bit of a gill plate and maybe uh, the lower lip. This is how it starts. And then I slowly work my way to the other side. And then I'll just match what I'm doing. I might even make a little template by just tracing it on the, this side and then carrying it over to the other side. It's rough right now, but uh, I'll sand it, come in with some files to get uh, into the, the tight grooves. And it doesn't have to be totally anatomically perfect. I'm just trying to give the impression of uh, sort of the head parts. And I think after we get a little paint on it, it's gonna look pretty good. All right, check it out, sunshine. We got like six to eight inches of rain last night. I had to go down to the dock and save the John boat from sinking. The uh, automatic float switch didn't work. And uh, Anyway, all right, here it is after the second clear coat. And it's looking pretty good, nice and shiny. It's a moment of truth. We need to know if this thing floats or sinks. All right, this is my little test tank, and this is salt water. I actually uh, mixed enough salt in there so the salinity would match the salinity of the ocean. If my calculations are right, this should slowly sink even without the hook. That's a good thing. I was a little concerned that it was going to be too slow of sinking. It sinks head first and the tail still wanting to float, so that's a good sign. And now we've got to add the little fin on the underside. All right, I can still see uh, the remnants of the little mark I made for the center line. And I'm just gonna take the razor knife and make a little mark that I'm hoping my uh, disc on my Dremel will follow.
popsicle stick. Now I just need to get this to be uh, more or less the shape of the body so I'm gonna sort of sketch and now I'm gonna take that to the sander and just grind that back. All right let's see how it fits. Well, that's looking pretty good. Now I just need to cut it off. All right I think that'll do it. Let's uh, sketch in the shape like so. All right, that's pretty doggone close. Let's go glue this thing in. All right, so I'm rounding off the edges. Uh, the clear coat does not want to stick to a really hard 90 degree sharp edge. And now I need to give the whole thing another good clear coat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this thing black since the idea is to um, put a coat of spastics on it and try to make it as chrome as possible. And black helps a little bit. All right, clear coat time. All right, I'm back from lunch and from being out on the lake for about an hour. Best way to wait for this thing to dry is to throw a couple lures in the lake. It's looking pretty good. Got a pretty good shiny surface. A couple wobbles in it, but not bad. I'm gonna go with a kind of mackerel paint job a little off from your typical macro paint job because uh, I'm going to use uh, more than just a couple of colors. And before we go in there, I just want to remind everybody if you're enjoying these kind of videos, these design builds and testing, and you're getting something out of it, go ahead and subscribe and share it and click on the bell and all that good stuff. Really trying to build the channel a little bit, trying to get to the point where it's self-sustaining. Let's go paint. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and wipe this thing down with some alcohol. We're going to use this stuff. All right, we'll let this dry and we'll come back and give it a light polish. Definitely makes a difference. And really, you're not really polishing, you're just sort of wiping off the overspray dust. All right, not too bad. You can see my hand in it pretty well. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, transparent gold and I'm gonna start from about the eye level and then back. Try to leave the face pretty much silver. Now I'm going to go ahead and set it, let it dry, and we're going to come in with uh, a template and just give it some uh, interesting sort of muddled colors to give it that look like, uh, like an open water fish. Or the light from the top of the ocean is sort of dancing on its back. All right, so here's the template I'm going to use. And uh, this is just something I cut out, some random shapes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to use transparent blue transparent green and then transparent black and what I'll do is I'll start uh, up here and then I'll shift it like a little bit to the back I'll hit it again and I'll shift it again and I'll hit it again with a different color All right, 
That looks pretty cool. All right. And this transparent black isn't really a pure black. It's called uh, Midnight Blue, but it's more like a really black blue. All right, so I've got a, a mesh here uh, so I can give it a little bit of a scale effect. And I'm going to use pearlescent blue, and this can easily get away from you. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm um, going to have it mostly on the top and just a hint as it goes down. Oh, that looks pretty cool. All right, and now I'm going to use this little uh, fin template and I'm going to create just a little hint of a fin here. That looks pretty cool. All right, those eyes really bring it together and just make it come alive. You know what, we've come this far, let's put some little freckles on it. All right, I'm pretty happy with the paint job so far. All right, so let me go ahead and, and get the clear coat on there and uh, I'll show it to you when it comes out of the chamber. We'll put some hooks on it and hopefully if the sun is still out and shiny, we'll get some underwater shots. All right, so here we are out on the lake. All right, let's see what it looks like near the surface here. <laughs> so it's got some good action. Let's get some underwater shots. I'm really happy with the action. It's got a pretty wide wobble, I'm surprised. And the little bit of what looks like it uh, waving to one side and the other is mostly me. I'm holding the uh, rod with one hand, the camera with the other, and I'm trying to keep the boat going straight. It's really killing it with that flash. So here I turn the boat to as fast as it'll go, which is about six miles an hour. Okay, I slowed it down. It was really giving me a hard time trying to hold on to the camera and the rod in that current. the way this thing swims. Can't wait to get it out there on the Gulf of Mexico and troll it behind my boat. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps the, the channel out and I'll see you on the next video.